Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up. Yes, August just finished. We're in September now. So in terms of the videos that I made this month, I continued on with trying to post two videos a week. I've been posting on like Mondays and Fridays whenever I can. I think there was only one Monday in August that I didn't get a video up. I don't expect it to go on forever, but I'm going to just keep trying to put out as much content as possible because I like putting out content for you guys. I like interacting with you guys. I like talking with you guys about books. Obviously, I've been doing this for like four years or three years now. So anyways, the videos that I actually put out. I did two unboxing videos this month. The first one was the quarterly unboxing. They relaunched their program and they have two different book subscription services out and I did the sort of like adult fiction one. They call it their literary box, which I have a problem with because literary implies a specific type of book and that isn't necessarily the type of book that they are providing. But that is one of the unboxing videos that I did. The other one that I did I just posted and it's the My Book Box unboxing. This one is really interesting because you get to choose which genre of books you receive um, and the two books that I received I'm super intrigued by. One of them has really high ratings on Goodreads so I'm definitely going to be reading that one for sure. Then I did a couple of book reviews this month. I did a review of Burn Baby Burn by Meg Medina which I really really enjoyed. I highly recommend checking that out if you are interested in historical fiction 1970s New York City. It's super well done. And then the other book review that I did was for The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead which is one of the big buzzy books of the fall specifically because Oprah picked it for her book club and pushed up the publication date. So I went out and picked it up right away and read it and really enjoyed it. I gave both of those books I believe 4 out of 5 stars. So those reviews are there if you are interested in more information on either of them. I also put up a video talking about Middle March or at least the first half of Middle March. I finished Middle March this month. I'm super excited and doing Middle March Madness with a bunch of you guys was a lot of fun. Seeing everyone attempt to read this book in the month of August was just really motivating for me to keep going with the book. I know not everyone finished reading Middlemarch but I think that it's great that a lot of people at least tried and I know a lot of people are going to continue reading the book even though they didn't finish it in the month of August. I will have a Middlemarch video coming up this Monday kind of wrapping everything up so you'll see all of my thoughts on the whole reading experience and on the book itself then. And then I participated in Bout of Books this month which wasn't my most successful readathon of the year but I'm still really happy with what I read. I'm going to just link to the wrap up because I'm going to assume that at this point you don't really care about the books that I was going to read. The books I finished during that week were In the Country We Love by Dan Garrow. This is a memoir of her life. She had parents who were living in the United States illegally and they eventually got deported back to Colombia and so it talks about her life living in the United States without her parents and her trying to figure out how she's going to survive in the United States and just live her life without parents around. I really enjoyed this one. I gave it a three out of five stars on Goodreads. I think I officially I'm like this is more like three and a half stars because the story is really really well done but I don't like the writing style that much. It's really casual writing style so I feel like this is a book that would be better consumed on audio if you are someone who does audiobook. The other one I finished was March Book 3 uh, by John Lewis and I really enjoyed this one as well. I gave it a four out of five stars. This whole series is great but again you can check out my wrap up for more thoughts on this because I don't want this video to be like 20 minutes long when I've already talked about these books. But if you haven't read the March graphic novel series highly recommend it. It's so good. I am definitely going to be picking up my own copy of this. I got this for the library so this is definitely on my to buy list and it's just so fantastic. I highly recommend it. So besides those books I also read The Book of Harlan this month by Bernice McFadden. This book I liked, I didn't love. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. The way they pitched this book is that you are following Harlan who is like this really talented musician. He ends up traveling to Paris to work as a musician and he ends up getting captured by the Nazis and is put into a concentration camp during World War II. However, that is such a small part of the story. You start off like back in the 1910s, I want to say like 1917-ish area, and you get to see like Harlan's grandmother and grandfather and his mother being born and how his mother meets her husband and how they have Harlan and all the things that happen with Harlan. So there's like a good 30 years before you actually get to the World War II part and then I feel like that whole part happens so quickly and then you deal with the aftermath of that. So I didn't like it because it felt like it took forever to get to that point that the 
book was teasing or the cover was teasing, which is such a disappointment. But if you remove that expectation from the book, I feel like this is still a really good story. I really enjoy the fact that you are following this African American family living in the United States during this time period because I feel like it's a time period often overlooked. I really enjoy the fact that you get to see what it was like for a black person living in a concentration camp during World War II because again that's not something that's discussed very often and it was also really interesting to see how Harlan dealt with it afterwards and talking about like the sort of PTSD that he had and just his own life growing up after having that experience. So it was just a really unique, really interesting story. And then the other book that I finished was the Alexander Hamilton biography by Ron Chernow. I have been talking about this book for months now because I've been reading it for months and I finally finished it. My goal was to finish it by the end of August. I made it sort of like a summer reading project and I finished it I think around mid-August. There came a point where I was just really close to finishing it so I just kept like pushing through to just get the book done and I really enjoyed it. I kind of forgotten how much I enjoy biographies. I think especially since I've started doing booktube I've stayed away from them a little bit just because they take so long to read and I'd forgotten how long they take to read. I tried to read um, the George Washington biography that Ron Chernow wrote. I think I tried to read it last year or maybe it was two years ago and I got it from the library which was the first mistake because having that due date <laughs> was really difficult because I couldn't take, you know, three months to read the book. I really like presidential biographies and I wanted to, at one point in time, read a biography for every US president, but then I stopped because I was having such a hard time with it. But I think what I need to do is buy it on ebook like I did with the Alexander Hamilton biography and then spend like three or four months with it, just taking my time with it, not feeling super rushed to complete it. In terms of the actual biography itself, again, it's really well written. There's a reason why this book is so popular and it's not just because of Hamilton, although Hamilton obviously does help a lot. But if you're reading this book because of Hamilton, I feel like you might be a little bit disappointed because there's a lot more happening in here. Obviously it's like a seven, eight hundred page story. So the actual plot of Hamilton is a very small part of the full story of Alexander Hamilton that Ron Chernow is covering here. Ron Chernow focuses a lot on the political side obviously and the Revolutionary War and like sort of Alexander Hamilton's work that he's done in the United States and the different people even that were his contemporaries of that time who are really well known. Like there are complete chapters dedicated to George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and John Adams and things like that. So you get sort of this deeper history into all these other people. But if you just want to like experience the plot line of Hamilton in this novel form, you're not going to get it in this book because there is a lot more happening. Whenever I would notice like a plot line from the Hamilton musical that I know only from song form. If I would notice that in the story it would just be like these brief moments and chapters and then I would be done and moving on to something else. And so if you're someone who likes biographies definitely read this book. Um, if you are someone who's really interested in US history then I think you can read this book. I think that this is definitely one of the more readable biographies as well just because Alexander Hamilton lived such an interesting life. But I will admit even for myself there were points that I found really boring because I don't really care that much about politics. Although it was really interesting to see how much or how little politics has changed like since the founding of our country politics has been sort of this gross thing and people still act really horribly and act really horribly back then. So all of that was just really re really interesting and I'm really glad that I ended up like pushing through and reading this entire biography. So that was basically my August. I'm currently reading The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. Ken Liu is going to be at Buck Riot Live which is happening in New York City in November which I will be attending. So I'm currently reading through that book and I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm about 50% of the way through it. If you're someone who likes fantasy a lot this is definitely an author you should check out. Also if you're interested in attending Buck Riot Live there is a coupon code down in the description. You can check it out for more information but basically you can get $20 off a weekend ticket or $10 off a single day ticket. So if you live in or around New York City or you want to visit New York City in November, that is a thing you can come attend. Ken Liu, like I said, is going to be there. Meg Medina is going to be there. Walter Mosley is going to be there. Uh, Mara Wilson is going to be there. The little girl from Matilda who's not a little girl anymore. So yeah, again, a link is down in the description if you are interested in more information on that. But I will be reading more authors who are attending Book Riot Live over the next couple of months as I prepare for the event. So yeah, I think that's everything that I have for you guys today. If you have any questions or comments about any of the books I talked about or any of the videos that I've posted recently, anything like that, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. Um, otherwise, feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite reader was of the month of August. So yeah, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.